Hello and welcome back to our Calradia Expanded at War series and we're going to be attacking a couple of barbarian raiders here as we are making massive bank just from our caravans and our mercenary wages of course. So here's the main reason why I'm doing this. I actually want to go in here and see what kinds of units the, the barbarians actually have available to them because I've never fought these guys before or a very limited amounts in the past and I think it could be pretty cool to find out exactly what they're all about because it's been well it's been a bit of a mixed bag really you know whenever I've um, fought some of these guys in the past or shall we say fought uh, some of the additional bandits that we've um, had added by the Calradia at War mod it has always been very small parties, but this is a very large one indeed, so I'm actually kind of um, intrigued about what we can find here. But look at how much damage I did just from attacking that guy in the head there. That is literally just due to our, our perk, of course. I mean, they're all, I mean, it, it's always going to do massive damage anyway, but I don't know whether we would have even been able to kill the guy if we had not taken the perk. You know, may he, may, maybe he would have survived, but it's, I would say, probably unlikely. It very much depends, obviously, on the speed bonus that we're currently getting as well. Let's tell our forces to charge in here, too. And uh, bear in mind that I obviously will be taking a look at my perks after this as well. I'm already doing a task, by the way. I'm doing a task that is to eliminate brigands in the area because, of course, I had to return to Vlandian territory to acquire a couple more troops because obviously our clan leveled up in the previous episode and I was so far away because I was in Sturgeon territory that I couldn't really do much about that and of course I want to try and use those as much as I possibly can I want to use only Vlandian units for the most part now that we've um, now that we've kind of figured out thanks to uh, some of you in the comments that the Vlandian sharpshooters are fantastic and I'm very pleased to to know that, actually, because I thought to myself that they're going to be relatively similar to how Swadian sharpshooters were in Warband. But we've got to remember, or shall we say I have to remember, that Vlandia is actually a combination of the Rodox and Swadia from Warband. And if you think about those two factions, well, who has the best crossbowmen in the game? Yeah, that's right. It's the Rodox. So obviously they're going to have a pretty decent um, Rodox party. Oh, sorry, no, not Rodox party. A pretty decent crossbow offering for everyone to take advantage of, hopefully. Anyway, there you go. We've taken this. I'd actually like to take a look at their tree. This is the main reason. Wow. Okay. Hello there, Barbarian Legendary Slayer. I, You know, I kind of wish there was a way to recruit these guys. I think there is. I think technically what I could do is I could try to persuade some of these guys to join me. But then that kind of gets rid of the whole, you know, spear bracing, pole arm using unit. And I feel like that, uh, well, it strays a bit too far away from the theme of the series, unfortunately. But... These units would have been fantastic for my previous character, the Berserker. That would have been amazing, actually, to have a whole whole team of barbarians running by, by the side of us right there. Obviously, we were using My Little Warband, which obviously is, an, is a fantastic mod and generally is going to be very, very useful to uh, people that want to create custom troop trees. And I, I, I don't know, I don't think I'm going to be reintroducing that into this series, but I was very tempted because it is, well, it is just fantastic. It is great. It allows you to do so much stuff and it allows you to customize absolutely every single thing. But I did realize that it was creating quite a strong force for us. And I'm, I'm saying we were very very powerful and i i did not give myself anything different um from what regular units would have but obviously because i am a player i'm a person you know i can think and i can think to myself oh okay i'm gonna put these points into these skills and i'm going to maximize the efficiency of these units however the way it works is um is obviously a little bit different with 
uh, with the AI and with what with what they decide to do with their units. Because if you go to their units right here, so like for example, if I were to go to the Vlandian sharpshooters, I have a couple of those. You can see that they have a wide variety of different skills, and I personally don't know why this is to be honest, because as far as I am aware, I don't think they can spawn with anything else apart from the ridged arming sword and the Pavis shield. So for me specifically, I don't know why they would have 80 in pole arms. I don't know why they would have 80 in riding skill or throwing or two-handed or anything like that. They, they All of these skills should be at 20 with the exception of crossbow, one-handed and athletics. And that's it. Everything else should be the lowest it possibly can be to maximize the strength of these units. But obviously, the developers of Bannerlord are doing that for a very specific reason. They're doing it for balancing reasons and, and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, it, it's it, that's the reason why, as I say, our, um, our custom units with My Little Warband were so much more powerful because I was just maxing them out. And the regular units don't necessarily get maxed out in the same way so that's something to bear in mind oh here we go here we go hello there can i defeat these guys yes i think i can thank you very much let's take them down there we go all right did i did i complete the task yes indeed i have completed the task fantastic okay so let's recruit a couple more troops right here let's sell all the prisoners there we go and let's go into the trade screen we're going to be able to sell for a lot of cash right here mainly because of that chess piece that we just acquired from that uh, from that battle so we're going to get another eight thousand from that which is really quite amazing and now here's the thing what kind of villages do we have nearby here well we have grain we have grain and uh, yeah, I think I think grain looks pretty good here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to buy a brewery here. I'm going to buy this person's brewery. I wish to buy your brewery. Yes, there we go. That's going to be 14,000. And I might like to buy it. Can I buy this guy's brewery too? No, seems like I can't do that. Okay, so bear in mind that obviously because death is disabled and everyone is going to be sticking around for a very long amount of time throughout this campaign, I am going to be attempting to maximize our companions. So so here's the thing. I, I, I did uh, I did see a comment. There was, uh, there was a person that said something like, um, you know, please, uh, you know, saying to me, please choose your companions carefully because obviously they're not going to die and they're going to stay with you and, and so on. And no worries. Don't worry about that. I have that all in hand. Basically, the only reason why I have not really cared about my companions so far is because they are just caravan people. They're just caravan people. I'm just sending them off to get some uh, trade skill as much as I possibly can. And that trade skill is obviously going to help us out in the future. And that's the main reason why I didn't really bother to outfit them in anything. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do that to our people that are going to potentially be helping us and indeed be joining us as vassals later down the line or whatever the case may be. So don't worry, everything is going to work out just fine. But anyway, let's see. What is this? This is a pretty nice lance, gotta say. This is a pretty nice lance, but I don't think I can use it because it's not spear bracing. So, uh, oh yeah, um, actually to, uh, to reiterate upon spear bracing as well, someone actually told me that spear bracing is, um, is determined by the length of your polearm. So if a particular unit does not have a, um, a long enough polearm, they will be unable to use spear bracing, which is, uh, well, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. But that kind of makes me a little bit worried now that the pikemen that we currently have available do not have the right pole arm. Oh, no, they do. They do. As you can quite clearly see, they have a weapon length of 222 and we have a weapon length of 222. So it is most likely they will be able to, uh, to do that, which is really good. So that means that we will be able to spear brace with them. What is this? Groups of deserters from all factions have united under fear of persecution, sharing their wealth and forming a formidable threat at Chornobus. Well, where's that? There's no way that is nearby to me, right? Chornobus. 
There it is. Aha, it's very, very close to Omor. Okay, so it's all the way over here. Uh, what? Ah, oh, there we go. I need to go zoom in a little bit. Ah, there it is. Okay, so that's where they have appeared. Well, we're going to be going over there in just a second because we are, of course, going to attempt to do battle with a couple more Vlandian, uh, not Vlandian, a couple more Sturgian vassals and maybe help out some Vlandians in the process. Anyway, let's take a look at what we have here. We have a number of different perks that we can spend. Infantry in your party have their melee weapon skills increased by 30 while in shield wall formation. I think you know where I'm going with this. Yes, yeah, so I'll probably take that one. And yes, yes, the other one is literally just about morale. So we're going to be taking Phalanx right there. And otherwise increases carry capacity of pack animals by 20% and a better deal for buying and selling mounts or mounted infantry increase your party speed by 30% well mounted infantry what does that mean does that mean the the, the horses that you give to your infantry or something like that maybe yeah, yeah why not why not let's do that one and doubles the chance of learning new crafting parts through smithing yes I will take that and then we have two perk points for trade Double relationship gain by resolving issues with merchants and every caravan entering your town generates 20 gold income and double relationship gain by resolving issues with artisans and every villager party entering your town generates 30 gold income. I don't care either way, actually. Personally, this does not matter to me at all. So I really don't know, actually. Uh, distributed goods, I guess. Every profitable shop you own gives you one renown per day. That sounds pretty fun. Every profitable caravan you own gives you one renown per day. Well, I'm going to take the shop because I think that's a little safer. And we're going to continue leveling up our trade skill. And I'm now going to get a little bit of extra endurance while we're at it. And there we have it. Okay, that seems pretty good. Oh, hello there, barbarian refugees. Okay, I might have to be a little bit careful here. They have a very large army, as you can see. Yeah. These guys would be very difficult to take on, in my opinion. I think they would be very, very, very difficult indeed. So maybe that's not going to be something that we really want to do right now. But I would definitely like to do that in the future. All right. Sturgeon, let's go. Let's go over to Sturgia and see what we can do. Now... I would like to invest in more workshops. Hello, Olek. Okay, I'm going to just leave you alone, sir. Don't really want to deal with you at the moment. I wouldn't mind fighting this guy, but he has a eh, pretty significant uh, significant combat strength at the moment, so I'd prefer to go after someone else. Maybe I could even take a castle. Do you think I could take a castle? I mean, I would like to become a vassal, if at all possible, if I am going to take a castle, because that means that I'd have, I'd, you know, I'd have first claim on it, and it would probably make sense, right? Yeah, I think that would probably make sense. So let me just see if I can find some people to do battle with. Maybe a slightly weaker vassal than what we just passed by. Maybe someone with around... Oh, hello. Who's that? That's Ragnvad himself. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. Yes. Could they give me someone a little bit less powerful, please? These guys... Wow. The... You know what? These uh, These castles really don't have anything amazing. Oh, hello. Oh, hello there. They have some very, very powerful units. I actually want to fight them super badly, but I just don't have the uh, don't have the combat strength available for that right now. So that is um, that is a big shame, actually. That is a big shame. I would have liked to have done that. Oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so do I have anything to sell here? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's sell that two thousand five hundred. Let's sell that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go. And I would like to... Does this guy own anything? No, he doesn't. Okay, this guy owns the linen weavery. Uh, this one owns the wood workshop. This one owns the smithy. Okay, I'd like to buy the smithy from her, if at all possible. I wish to buy your smithy. There we go. And uh, bear in mind, this is all going to give me renown over time and all that wonderful stuff. So, yeah, hopefully that's going to help us out. Okay. I'm going to very quickly go back to Vlandian territory because I realize now that I did not recruit as many units as I actually wanted to. So I'll be back in just a moment.
Well, that moment for me was actually a lot quicker than I anticipated because I came across someone that I thought may actually be a pretty decent target for us to attack. So before we head in there, I do have another perk to spend in trade. Increase your tariff income by 10% and wage decrease by 50% while waiting in settlements. That's actually pretty good. But I think I'm going to take villager connections because your workshop productions being increased by 25%. That sounds really good to me. So I'm thinking maybe we want to do that. The only unfortunate thing about that is that the secondary effect is not yet implemented. Is that true? I'm I'm actually I'm checking right now, okay. I'm checking right now. So trade skill. Let's have a look here. Villager connections. No, that is not implemented. Yeah. That is not implemented. However, villager connections, do bear in mind, is a governor skill. That's what it says here in the analysis of it. Oh. Apparently, it is still only the analysis from the beta version of 1.6.1, .1, and we're playing on 1.6.4, so it could very well be the case that it is working, but they just have not updated the website. But that is still a governor thing. Mm. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to be a governor at some point, right? right? Surely, hopefully, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but we'll see. Anyway, let's go in and attack Apollonia here, and we'll see how we do. So bear in mind, we have massive bonuses now. Whenever we are in shield wall formation, we are doing absolutely fine. We are going to be really, really good. And uh, we're going to have so much more damage done. We're going to have a lot of damage reduction. And generally, I don't think there's much that uh, the enemy can do to uh, defeat us, really. I'm going to let everyone else go into an auto-delegate. I'm going to allow our cavalry just to do whatever they want. They're usually very good at what they do. At least the Vlandian knights seem to be very good at what they do. So I'm just going to trust in their, in their judgment, shall we say. And I personally would like to get a little bit more one-handed weapon proficiency. So I'm going to try and get a kill with my one-handed skill in this fight, if I can. And then from there, well, we'll just, we'll see, I guess. But uh, yeah, I would like to get one point because we have 149 right now. And it would kind of make sense for us to do something about that. Ooh, I really want to murder this guy. I, I kind of just want to murder every single one of their cavalry. That's pretty much the only thing we want to do, because if we do that, it's going to dramatically increase the chances of our infantry not being completely annoyed by them. And we're going to just tell our infantry to go into a shield wall now. Generally, I don't want to tell them to go into a shield wall until they have gotten a little bit closer to the opponent, because, I don't know whether you know this, but when they're in shield wall formation, they move very, very slowly. So it may be the case that I might need to put them back into line formation just to get them over here. Yes, indeed. It seems that is indeed the case. Because the, look at this. Look at this. They are moving so slowly unless they are in line formation. That is that is crazy. I mean, to, to be fair, I mean, a close quarters formation like shield wall, I, I, I guess I can kind of understand that, to be honest. I can kind of understand it. All right. Let's see what I can do here. go I got my skill point <laughs> that's all I wanted to do <laughs> yeah that is all I wanted to do okay fantastic now let's tell our forces to go a little bit closer bear in mind that uh, of course I'm using our cavalry at the moment as a way to sort of distract the enemy as much as they possibly can be and just kind of giving uh, giving them something to worry about instead of focusing solely on our infantry so let's just move them closer here my sharpshooters are actually getting some good kills I, I i you know what i actually feel like we should probably level up many more of those to be honest i feel like they are so fun they're going to be a lot of fun to to play with and uh to to see them getting so many kills is going to be a lot of 
enjoyment. Ah, come on, can I survive? Can I get away from here? I have no athletic skill. <laughs> I have no athletic skill whatsoever, so it's highly unlikely I'd be able to do anything there, but it's fine because our forces are completely good and I don't think they are going to lose this. But uh, yeah, it would have been much better if I had not gotten killed. That, that would have been a better, better thing, wouldn't it? Yes, that would have been much better. But there you go. Victory for us. 62 renown, not too bad. And we do get to take a whole bunch of them prisoner. I'm going to be letting her go once again because, of course, Olek is the leader of her clan. And Olek, as we know, is uh, maybe quite, shall we say, agreeable. And I think he might decide to potentially join us at some point in the future. So we'll see if we can maybe speak to him after this, if he is not leading that army any further. Because I think that is, yes, that is indeed his army. And they were able to take this. Hilariously enough, I think I might even be able to take this myself. What do you think? I think I might be able to take it myself. Anyway, there's 150 in one-handed. Infantry and formation gain an additional 10% of the total experience earned after battles. Or infantry troops gain 2 experience daily. <sighs> Why do they... I, I don't know. I'm not even, you know, I'm not even going to complain about it anymore because personally, I think, I'm just going to say this perk is useless in my opinion. Two experience daily. If you think about how much experience one needs to be able to level up, it's just insane to expect two experience to actually do anything. However, 10% and an additional 10% of the total experience earned after battles, in my opinion, that's very good. So that's what we're going to go for. Anyway, let's go over to Sionan at the moment. I need to rest up a little bit. Well, maybe I don't, actually. Maybe I don't, because I think I would like to go back to Vlandian territory, as I said before, and we'll get some additional units. There's another 5,100 for us from selling the loot that we gained just now, and I think I'd like to get some more workshops, but let me actually just take a quick look and see if I... I do have a limit. I, I can assume I have a limit on how many I can get. Yes, I can get only four, so I need to be very, very uh, selective about what I do there. So let me, hmm, what can I actually do? Well, Praven has, ah, Praven has a, some, ah, yes, yes, okay, Praven has some very, very good villages around it, so I'm thinking we'll probably go over there and see if we can maybe purchase a brewery or something along those lines, because the grain is going to be very useful. Linen weavery, tannery, what, really? Brewery. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm going to buy it from her. Wish to buy your brewery. There we go. That's 13,000. Not bad at all. And I will be taking the remaining units that they have available here too. And that is going to max out our army, which is fantastic. So there you go. Fantastic. There we are. We are now completely maxed out. And now all I need to do is level them up, which is obviously not that big a deal. But it is definitely something that might be... Hmm, I, I don't think it's going to be that difficult. All right, so I sent a messenger to King Durthart right here, and I'm very much hoping that we will be able to become a vassal, yes. My lord, I wish to be more than a mercenary. Is there a way I could pledge myself as a vassal? And there you go. Okay, yeah, he says yes. Okay, we are fine to do that. Let's do it. Boom. Now, do bear in mind, I am going to be getting less renown for winning things now, because obviously I, uh, as a Vlandian culture, gained 20, I think it's 20 or 25% additional renown from battles as a mercenary. However, I personally would like the ability, and wow, they're actually giving me, they're giving me troops? They're literally giving me troops right now. That's fantastic. Okay, uh, let's just swap out some recruits. There we go. <gasps> He's giving me a two-handed sword? Why? Why you... Oh. Now I'm... You know, now, now I'm actually kind of sad because I was using two-handed weapons in the previous series and they were not giving me any rewards then. But now they're giving me rewards. Isn't that amusing? Okay. Well, um, yes. Okay, sure. Thank you. You've done a wise thing. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that, is, that is actually very, very funny. Okay, so we, we gained Sentinel. Um, didn't we? No, we didn't. Where is it? 
I mean, I thought I equipped it, but then I thought to myself, oh, well, maybe it's not equipped. Oh, that's my civilian gear, isn't it? Wasn't that my civilian gear that uh, that we were looking at right there? I actually, yes, that is my civilian gear. Okay, let me just take that off real quick. And now we can take a look at it. Okay, there it is. That is a fantastic weapon. That is a really, really good weapon. I think, you know, you know what? Just to honor the generosity of Mr. Dirthart, I am going to be using the two-handed sword a little bit just to level our, um, level our skill up slightly. Not a massive amount, but just enough to give us a, a nice little skill point increase. Because if you don't know this, that is a really good way of increasing the efficiency of your level ups. So for example, if you have a skill that's really, really low, it's a fantastic idea to think about using that skill in some way and then getting a massive amount of skill points in it and then you're going to be gaining so many skill points that it is then going to push your level forward. And that's the reason why in, in one of the previous series I did a little bit of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of build, at least initially, where I spent um, about three to four focus points in almost every single skill that I was going to use actively, of course, and that resulted in me leveling up much faster than normal. So that really does make a, uh, a pretty big difference. Anyway, th wh where's the two-handed? This is the two-handed. Okay, gonna get off my mount. This might be bad because I don't have any athletics. Ah, uh, yeah. They're blocking me. They're blocking me. Ah, uh, got him. Got him. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Oh, okay. Fine. 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 Did we? Did we at least level up? Did we at least level level up our um our two handed? I didn't see because I was concentrating on not dying, and then I ended up dying anyway. Oh well, never mind. That was a uh well <laughs> ill advised, shall we say relatively ill-advised. However, we are getting renown and we are getting influence, which is always nice. And we did not have to leave our um, our faction, technically, to become the vassal. So we are still in possession of the amount of influence that we had before, which is actually fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with that. And let's continue onward. Okay, so let me actually just take a quick look. Yep, I leveled up my two-handed quite nicely, not too bad. And I actually leveled up as a result of that, I think, maybe. I'm actually not entirely sure about that. Okay, two-handed weapons you wield have a 10% better handling. Probably going to be taking that. Or increases your damage with two-handed weapons by 30% against shields. Hmm. This, however, might actually be very useful. This one. Infantry troops in the formation you are leading have their damage increased by 15% against shields. I think we're going to take that. All right. That seems pretty good. Also, because we talked to uh, Mr. Dirthart, we gained a massive amount of charm skill. I don't know whether you realized that at the time. I uh, did not, actually, until now. But yes, we apparently did get a huge amount of charm skill, which I'm really, really surprised about. And increased relationship gain with opposite gender by 20% or same gender. Uh, I mean, I want to increase my relation with everyone. But usually clan leaders are male, so same gender, right? Yes, there we go. Okay, 30% chance to negate relationship penalty from Kingdom Decisions. That actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, I will be taking that because the other one is about winning tournaments. And this one, Town Governor has a 10% chance to get one relation while continuous projects are active. Or for every project completed, increase relation between random notable. Mm, I think 10% chance is a little bit better because that is infinite while continuous projects are active per day i mean i think that's pretty good because there are so many days right there are so many days so i think that makes more sense okay so i have one focus point to spend what do i want to spend it in well i could spend it in anything basically but i'm thinking we probably want to level up our medicine skill a little bit because i currently do not have any in that and it would probably make sense for us to have a little bit just a little, you know, just a little bit, just to sort of um, help us out here and there. Ooh, there might even be a siege going on. That would be pretty good to maybe level up my, um, you know, level up my two-handed. Um, yeah, level up my two-handed. <laughs> I just had to check to make sure. Oh, yes, that is that is the thing I wanted to say. Yes, the two-handed. Very good. 
Okay, uh, Swenrin Castle is going to be taken very easily, though. I'm thinking maybe I should go over to Daldorn Castle. Because Daldorn, as far as I'm aware, does not have a very large garrison at all. Oh. Well, Mr. Ragonvad is obviously being very annoying. There's Lucas. Who is that? Harbingers of Wrath. He seems to be a named unit of some kind. 79 units here. Okay, let's see if we can build this before anything happens. Bear in mind, my engineering skill is awful in every single aspect. It is really bad, actually. Uh, <laughs> I, should have put, I should have put a focus point in engineering. Look at it. Oh, it's pitiful. It's absolutely pitiful. Okay, your caravans returned 5,000 gold when destroyed and a 25% 20, decrease in buy price penalty for food items. And your shops return 5,000 gold when the town is captured by the enemy. Well, I'm going to be taking uh, the caravan because they are most likely the ones to be destroyed. And what is this? Vote for the owner of Swenrin Castle. Personally? Oh, they want to give this to me. Hmm. I'm actually going to attempt to level up my charm skill as much as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to vote for this guy, even though it's going to go to me. And if you vote for someone else with the maximum amount of influence, you gain massive amounts of charm skill, as you can see right there. So that's a, another little, um, little little tip, hint, whatever you want to call it, that you can utilize to level up your charm skill relatively quickly. Anyway, let's go over here and fight this vassal, because it seems like he's, um, he's definitely wanting to attack us. Maybe... Wait a minute. Is he the leader? He is. Mm-hmm. Hello there, sir. I would like to speak to you. I'm happy with my current liege. Mm. All right. Sure. I think that's probably just because we have zero relation with him. If I had a little bit more relation with him, I think he might be more likely to accept a conversation. And then I might be able to, you know, do something like, you know, unsavory, un you know, sort of shady goings on, you know, conversations in shadowy corners of the tavern or whatever. And uh, yeah, that kind of thing is definitely going to be something that uh, we could potentially do after we defeat him and let him go, I guess. That might, that might help us out. I should really check who my friends are, to be honest, through the encyclopedia, because that's probably going to make the most sense. Ow. Yes, that's also something that really annoys me, by the way, about the AI. They're always extremely good at using their pole arms to do damage to cavalry units. They're also very good at uh, shooting people in the neck. <sighs> yes, with their thrown weapons. I mean, I was under no illusion that we were going to win this, obviously, but I actually wanted to level up my own character a bit, you know? Uh, it seems like this episode is all about old man Byron making a fool of himself and uh, getting himself taken out in every single aspect, almost every single aspect, shall we say. Oh dear. Oh well, never mind, never mind. This is actually a very good shield, so I'm going to take that because I really like the size of it. Just look at how big it is. It really makes a huge difference, in my opinion, to protecting you against those arrows and maybe even against those wonderful, wonderful throne weapons that were coming towards me in this last battle. Yes. <sighs> oh well, never mind. We what? Did Did I not get a chance to let him go? Did he just escape? What? I have... I've never seen that before. Okay, that's amazing. I've never seen that before. Usually... Okay, this is bad. I'm gonna beg my leave real quick. Thank you. But, uh, yes. Usually, what happens is that the vassal gets eliminated very early on in the fight. But in this case, it didn't happen that way. That was great. Okay. Cancel tutorial. Thank you very much. Okay, so here we go. Let's um let's do a little bit of uh, production with our um with our little little castle here that I have, and uh, we're gonna try and build some things. I suppose. I mean, what else can I do? I mean, the construction is yeah, because of very low loyalty. So I need to get more loyalty. How do we get that? Okay, apparently that's that's zero. Okay, uh, we should probably stop doing this. Stop doing this. 
Where's loyalty, by the way? I don't see that anywhere. Huh. Maybe we need to... Hmm. I'm going to put forward a couple of policies. Can I do that? Can I actually put forward policies? Yes, it seems like I can. Okay, this is good. So if I can put forward some policies... Ah, this is good. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do anything with this. Settlement loyalty is increased by 0 0.5 per day. That would be a fantastic thing to take. But I obviously cannot do that because it is not... Well... Uh, I mean, 0% support, right? Zero, yeah, 0% 0 support, that's really good. Uh, militia production recruits replenish 20% faster. I'd like to take that as well, but it, apparently no one in Vlandia really thinks these things are any good. I personally think they're very good, but they are um, obviously not wanting to do that. This would also be great, town security being increased by one, but they obviously don't want that either. Wow. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, to be honest, because Dearth Art is a bit of a... He's a bit of a dictator, you know? He's a bit of a dictator, potentially. So, you know, he generally tends to be a bit greedy. And as a result, he's also... Hmm. Yeah. He's also, yeah, kind of difficult to work with. Okay, so... Ah, this is good. Town security is increased by one per day. Yes. Yes, I would like this. Thank you. I will be going for 150. There we go. And we've spent all of our influence now. So we're just going to have to do a little bit more to do better there. Town loyalty decreased. Town loyalty decreased. Everything is decreasing loyalty. Ah, this is fantastic. Again. But 0% support. Can I... Huh. I could stage a coup. I could stage a coup with one of these factions. I could join this faction and then we could see how we fight against Vlandia and then we could potentially execute Death Art or something like that. Maybe that would be an idea. Who knows? Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.